You got 24 hours to get back all my money. No, I'll kill you. Who's a dead man running? Who's all right? Everything's far from all right. Now move. You took a loan off Figo. What are you, completely insane? Okay, so you play Mr. Figo, Bloodshock. Yeah. Dead man running. He threatens to kill the main character, Nick Kane, if he mm -hmm. pay up in 24 hours. You got 24 hours to get back to Andrew Lodge or my organization, or I'll kill you. I don't take kindly to threats in my life. And that's exactly why I take in a little insurance. Johnny Sands is just about to pay your mother a little visit, mate. If you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? I'm not sure. 24 hours to live, uh... I'd probably just relax <laughs> and reflect on what my life has been like to that point. Like, he, he is under different circumstances where it's even more uh, at stake because his mom is the person he loved the most is at stake. You so much as harm one hair on that beautiful woman's head and I'll take it out on your fucking skull. You know, so you take her as collateral because we already know that Nick Tamma's character in the actual film has consistently lived his life with it on the line. You know, so threatening his life is not gonna face him very much, but his mom, it changes everything. Mm. Yeah. So you wouldn't, well, you wouldn't sort of go for any nice meals or anything? Or I would, I would relax, eat. <laughs> I probably wouldn't run around trying to do too much. Because like, I'd spend the day, like, like some people probably tell you they travel somewhere nice, but then how long would it take you to travel there? Mm. Like, why would you get one last flight from New York to London and land in London and your day's over? <laughs> <laughs> um, we've seen you in quite a few films recently. Are you going to be focusing more on your film career now? Well, I enjoy being a part of the storytelling process. The depth of actual screenplays are what attracted me to committing to these projects. Um, I haven't lost my passion for music, you know, so they should expect me to continue to make music, but I can't create cause and effect in three minutes. I can only write descriptions in the film, so I've been, I started writing screenplays. Like in my new album, November 23rd, it actually releases, and I wrote, produced, and directed my first film, and it'll be within the album package. What would your dream role be, film role? A dream role? I don't know. If, I don't know if I have a dream role. I might have a dream budget <laughs> to the actual film that allows things to happen that my imagination says would be the coolest things to see. You know, like, because the summer blockbuster films all have one thing in common. They have extreme marketing finances allocated to them uh, being very visible you know, and creating an awareness on the actual project. But, but just being a part of projects that are really well put together, that when I look back at what I've done in my acting career, that I'm proud of everything that I've been affiliated with or associated with, I'll be happy with that. Mm. Um, Ashley Cole was an executive producer on the film. Yeah. Um, obviously, his wife, Cheryl, is a big um, star. X Factor judge. Yeah. yeah. We're right in the middle of X Factor at the moment. Are you a fan of the show? Well, I, get, I don't get a chance to see it very much. You know, I'm moving around a lot, so I'm aware of it. Mm. But, you know, I haven't. I don't get a chance to watch it. What do you think of reality shows like The Kind of Simon Cowell? Well, I think we're all stars. You know, I think when you get into the reality point, it's interesting to watch people's imperfections and see them, uh, their defects of character come out on screen. Mm. Because... I, Eventually, they forget the cameras is rolling, and they give you some of their own dysfunctional behavior. <laughs> <laughs> what about Susan Boyle? Are you a fan of hers? Susan Boyle. So you don't know who Susan no. Boyle is? I thought everyone knew her in America. <laughs> <laughs> she came from uh, Britain's Got Talent. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I know you're talking about it now. Yeah. I just didn't catch the name of me. Scottish either. lady. Yeah. You, I, I was going to ask you if you were going to do a, if you'd like to do a duet with her, but a duet? <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, it might be cool. You never know. Okay, so you're going to be in the film. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite 
Can you imagine yourself getting involved in these sort of reality shows? I mean, I, I really... No, nah, not really. No? I mean, I produce some of them. Mm. You know, I think it's interesting that uh, you could take a person that doesn't have the qualities that we would say a star should have. Because, I mean, there's four qualities that I think make a star, and that would be quality and material, performance, appearance, and personality. Mm -hmm. And when you lack in one of those areas, you got to pick up the slack in one of the others. So if we watch people that, from a, a, a realistic standpoint, now that reality television is exploding, those criteria don't mean as much anymore. You know, like a socialite, a person who's just popular, can command the same interest as the people that we consider stars. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on the film. It was great. Right. Tick tock, tick tock. <laughs>